Today's SSD in for data recovery is a Samsung 970 Evo. It's a 500 gig model and it's been running in a customer's server uh, delivering an SQL database for about five years. So this one was made in August 2018 and as of today's date, November 2023, it's lasted only about five years. And this Evo would be the base model. So you've got the Evo, the Plus, and the Pro. Probably not the correct SSD to be running in a server that needs performance and endurance and longevity. But anyway, five years and it's just gone over its five-year warranty. How about that? Here's another minor common issue I'm used to seeing is when they're not fitted correctly. If I show you from this angle, you can see that the back of it is bent upwards. That's because this back screw hole has been too high for the mounting point. So if someone doesn't fit them correctly, they're either bent upwards or sometimes if they're too low, you'll see them bent the other way, bent downwards. This one is in because the customer has been complaining that it no longer boots their computer or their Windows server. Let's peel back this sticker and have a look what's underneath. So here is the biology of this SSD. We've got the Samsung S4LR020 Phoenix. That's the main controller chip. Then up here we have the DRAM cache memory. This one's 512 megabytes. You'll see SEC written on a lot of Samsung chips. That's Samsung Electronics Company. We'll go over to here to the NAND chips. We've got two. And because this one's a 500 gigabyte unit, both of these are 250 gigabytes each. And from there, we'll go back into the middle region. And all of this area inside here is our power management region. So this is our main PMIC, power management integrated circuit chip. Down here, we have the E-fuse, the electronic fuse. And we've just got a couple of load switches three of them. So this region is responsible for powering all the electronics. So let's do some probing and check all our electronics. I'm going to go straight to the input side of the E-fuse and we've got 3.3 volts. That's good. Let's go to the output side. I can see the major side here and we've got our 3.3 volts coming out. Let's have a look around the place. It's hard to probe directly around the power management chip, but we can get a look at what's happening with these capacitors. So it's probably a ground side. Ground side, 3.3 volts. 3.3 volts. So that's a good thing. That's a good consistent thing to see, our 3.3 volt logic. Let's have a look at this load switch so we can see our dot here. It indicates our pin number one. So usually the input side is this side. I can see a major uh, rail going in. And we've got 1.8 volts. So that is a common voltage for logic. So without looking at the data sheet, I'm really just going to have a look at the, the output side, which is usually the opposite of the dot, 1.8 volts. Let's have a look around this little load switch, RB990. So it looks like we're getting voltage from our E-fuse going up into the this pin here, 3.3 volts. On the out we get 1.8 volts. There might be ground pins. This one here, this is a 5.5 volt out. And then possibly the outside without looking at the data sheet. What's this? Texas Instruments I think made. 0.8. Is that ground? I'm not sure. Uh, a couple of pins here, 0.8, okay. Okay, let's go up to this little load switch. Again, usually if that's our pin 1, this would be our input side. They look like they're paired. We got a, 1 volt if I can get a good probe of it. Maybe let's try the back of this capacitor. Yeah, just getting a probe there. Samsung doesn't really publish data sheets for this because they've got a completely vertical business model, which means 
they make and sell these products. They're not released for third-party vendors to use. So you can't get a lot of data sheets for Samsung technologies at all. Let's have a look down at our NAN voltages. So we should see power going to our memory chips. Usually I look for the biggest capacitors is floating around. We can see there's one up here with pin 1 and it kind of mirrored down here. So one of these sides is going to be ground. It must be that side. And this side in here for a 2.6. So probably 2.5 volt logic which is um, consistent with what I've seen with other Samsung NAND chips up the back here there around the 2.5 2.6 that's the ground side there so we know that our memory chips here are getting power everything looks good looks like a couple of test points maybe was that the ground side and there you go so there's a little test point for your voltage there they're also inside here so what's this side up the top can't really get a good probe let's try and touch that a bit nicer nothing maybe ground there you go 2.6 volts on that one a couple of big capacitors 1.8 volts so 2.5 so you can see about this 2.6 I'm gonna call it 2.5 so you can see our power management chip is uh, working hard at providing all the different voltages necessary to run this board. All these electronics look in reasonable condition, so let's plug it in and see what happens. So I can get this SSD to detect, but it does have issues. On startup, I get this error message. Warning, please back up your data and replace your hard disk drive. A failure may be imminent and cause unpredictable fail. So we're getting its own smart reporting system saying there's something wrong with it. If I test it, I'll be able to figure out can I access the drive's data and this is showing me that I do have access to the data. However, we do have some problems available spare. I'll show you in the Windows dialog what has actually happened to this. So it's got bad sectors or in, in the SSD land it's um, the wear leveling is wearing out so if you open up your system storage disk and volumes uh, setting in your windows you'll get this information so you can see here's the SSD that's connected uh, the 970 Evo 500 gig warning issues detected so we can also read these issues by going to properties now Here's the major problem. Available spare, 17%. So this should say 100% if it was a working SSD. So this is all the spare sectors that when sectors over time wear out, it can use the spare sectors. And it's only got 17% of the spare sectors left to write to. So yes, this thing is almost going to wear out completely and completely brick. So I need to get the data off this immediately, which won't be a problem for me. But had this been left any longer, it eventually it will completely wear out and it will just brick and be useless. So I'll get the data off this one now and the customer will have to actually buy probably one of the more professional models if it's going to be run for a server. That's it for this video guys. I hope you liked it. Talk to me in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.